السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم النبي أولى بالمؤمنين من أنفسهم وقال تعالى لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم أزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم اللهم صل وسلم عليه في كل وقت وحين اللهم صل وسلم عليه في العالمين إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم عليه اللهم صل وسلم عليه ما عدد ذكره الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم عليه عدد ما سلي عليه وعدد ما, ما لم يصلي عليه اللهم صل وسلم عليه صلاة تنجينا بها من الأهوال والآفات وترفع بها عنا القربات اللهم صل وسلم عليه صلاة ترفع بها الدرجات وتحت بها عنا الخطيئات وتقضي بها عنا الحاجات اللهم صل وسلم عليه عدد الأشجار ومياح البحار وملء السماوات والأرض وما تعاقب الليل والنهار This is Durood and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Whatever I was doing was sending salat was salam and our Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم in the most profound manner Insha'Allah, you are here today to listen to some aspects from the life of our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These majalis and these gatherings are very blessed. They are very blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So you are not here sitting in any ordinary gathering. You are in a gathering where there are many malaika, many angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounding this gathering at this time. And not only that, taking our names one by one in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mentioning, oh Allah, so and so are present in this majlis of dhikr where they, they have gathered to mention about your Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, forgive each and every one of them. So we are in a very auspicious gathering right now. So if you are ready to listen attentively, you can benefit tremendously, inshallah. Whenever I have the opportunity to speak about my beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my Rasul, my guide, my master, my mentor. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps because I am not worthy enough to speak about him. I feel very insignificant 
very humble, very empty. But at the same time, because he is my Nabi, he is my master, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is my spiritual guide. He is my mentor. Because of that, I am and you are in his ummah. So, I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you and me the shafa'ah and the intercession of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah. Say Ameen. The month of Rabiul Awwal is generally a month where Muslims across the globe express their sentiments of love and affection to our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam across the globe. But let me tell you, the poet said that after praising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have not elevated the rank of the Nabi of Allah. What was being done just now, praising the Nabi of Allah, whatever was done, this did not elevate the rank of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he's saying, my poetry or us praising the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the reverse elevates us. It makes us higher, not the rank of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already exalted, Allah has already declared in the Quran the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ We have already elevated your name. There is not a second in this world where the name of Allah and the name of His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not elevated and mentioned in every nook and corner in the world. In the adhan, in the entire world, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah The name of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is elevated. Qadhi Iyaz rahmatullahi alayhi, a great scholar of the past, he categorically mentioned the land my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is resting upon right now in Medina is the most sacred piece of land in the eyes of Allah after the Kaaba. The land where Rasulullah is resting in Medina is more sacred in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than other than the Kaaba. Many examples can be cited of prominent personalities throughout history who in addition to benefiting mankind during their respective life equally had the profound impact on society after their demise by virtue of the, the noble legacy they left behind. However, there is only one example without exception in the entire annals of history of a person, of one individual who apart from benefiting mankind while he was alive and even after his demise, he equally benefited mankind before his birth. He benefited mankind before his birth. And who was that? No other than my Nabi and your Nabi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As an unborn child, his blessings were experienced. His barakat was appreciated both locally and internationally. 
Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not only an amazing child, wallahi he was an amazing baby. Not only amazing child, but he was also an amazing baby. You do not normally attach amazement and uniqueness to a baby. But our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was completely different. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was loved by all. And he was adorned by every object, animate and inanimate. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Leave the world alone. Even Mount Uhud could not do without me. What is Mount Uhud? An inanimate object. Leave the world alone. Stones and trees used to praise the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the blessings of the Nabi of Allah was experienced by the Quraysh and the entire world while Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not yet even being born. My talk today to you, this is just a tamheed. This is just an introduction to what I'm going to say. What is my topic today? How much do you love the Nabi of Allah? And how much love the Nabi of Allah had for you and I? Two things. How much do you and I love the Nabi of Allah? And how much love the Nabi of Allah had for me and you? Because love is something, it's from tarfain. It is not one-sided. Love is from both sides. If you have love from both sides, then that's a genuine love. That's a genuine relationship. So how much do we love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And how much did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved us? So, the only human being, only human being whose life has been molded and fashioned to perfection, that it could reflect and manifest guidance for humanity, in its entirety till the day of Qiyamah is the life of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said, Addabani Rabbi fa'ahsana ta'deebi. Addabani Rabbi fa'ahsana ta'deebi. My Allah fashioned me. My Allah nurtured me and my Allah perfected my nurturing. Like the poet said, Shahid al Anam bi fadlihi hatta al Ida. Shahid al Anam bi fadlihi hatta al Ida. Ma shahidat bihi al Al Fadlu ma shahidat bihi al Aadao. Subhanallah. Only if you understand this in Arabic, what it says. In its entirety, the entire humanity was compelled to acknowledge the nobility of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to such an extent, to such an extent that even if you will ask his enemies, even if you will ask Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and the enemies of Mecca, they also will tell you, they also will testify in spite that we hate this man, in spite that we don't like him, he was the most honest and the most truthful of all mankind. That kind of Nabi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you and I. According to majority of the scholars, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal. Remember, it is not only the birth, but also the death. And let me make one thing very clear here. There are differences of opinion among the scholars with regards to the date. The date, D-A-T-E, the date in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. But there was no differences of opinion with regards to the date the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. Ulama have mentioned, scholars have mentioned, 
There are differences of opinion that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may have born on the 9th of Rabi al-Awwal. Some said he, maybe he was born on the 8th of Rabi al-Awwal. Some said he was born on the 10th of Rabi al-Awwal. Differences of opinion with regards to the date of the birth of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there was no differences of, in the date of the demise of the Nabi of Allah, which was on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal. And I'm going to tell you precisely when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. Six months after Amul Fil. Do you know the incident of the elephant? Where the surah was revealed in the Quran. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil. Where Abraha came to destroy the Kaaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed his entire army with the birds. Ashab al-fil. It was that same very year. Spot on. Six months after that incident. It was on a Monday morning. A Monday morning corresponding to the calendar, the 22nd of April. 22nd of April in the year 571. I'm going to tell you even the time. It was around 4.30 in the morning. Around 4.30 in the morning. On that day, the Monday, on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's presence was made possible in this world. The mother of Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiyallahu anhu, her name was Shifa bint Aswad radiyallahu anha. She was the midwife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the one who delivered the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to what she is saying. I witness. She had I witness. She witnessed this. And she is saying, When the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when my Nabi and your Nabi came out from the womb of his mother, Amina radiallahu anha, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out from his mother's womb, Pure and clean, there was no kind of filth. When a child is born, a lot of blood, a lot of dirt that comes out. Even the afterbirth, the child has to be showered and washed. It was Allah, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, divinely in the womb of the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, showered him before Allah brought him into the world. Not only that, Shifa bin Aswad, she said, I observed the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he came into this world. He was already, uh, he was already circumcised. When the Nabi of Allah came into this world, his umbilical cord was already severed. When a child comes, what happened? The umbilical cord that sustained the child and the mother has to be cut and severed. That also was already cut before Rasulullah entered into this world. She said, you know when a child is born after the child is cleaned up, the nurse would take the child and put it in the arm of the mother. Right? Sisters, you know that. Right? They will take the child and put it in the arm of the mother for bonding. For bonding. Okay? She is mentioning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I need your rapt attention, please. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only 15 to 20 minutes old. 15 to 20 minutes old, she put the Nabi of Allah in the arms of his mother, Amina radiallahu anha. The Nabi of Allah removed himself. He removed himself from the arms of his mother, turned, turned and went into sujood before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 15, 20 minutes old. Look in the tafsir, you will see it. Look in the books of seerah. You will read this. 20 minutes old went into sujood before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Nabi of Allah remained in sujood for a very long time. 
Then by the support of his hand and his knees, he raised from sujood and he pointed his hand towards the skies. He pointed his hand towards the skies. And it is said, when the Nabi of Allah pointed that finger, that index finger towards the sky, the entire room was filled with light. Allah, Allah, Allah. 20 minutes old, not 20 years. At the time of the birth of the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah addressed the Jannah. Allah addressed all the Jannat. Iftahu, Allah says to the angels, Iftahu abwaab al-sama kullaha wa abwaab al-jinan kullaha. Oh my angels, open all the doors of the Jannah. Open all the doors of the sky. I want each and every one of you, subhanallah. I want each and every one of you. Allah is commanding the angels. All of you should be ready to go and be present at the arrival of my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He is coming into this world. Go for his arrival. Every angel was given the good news and glad tidings to each other. Rasulullah is coming. The last Nabi is coming. He is going to be born. The mountains grow higher. The water in the oceans rose higher. The fish in the ocean began giving good news to each other. The fish in the ocean, what were they doing? Giving good news to each other. What good news? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is coming. Rasulullah is coming. Shayateen, the angels, uh, sorry, the, the shayateen, they were chained, completely chained. Iblis, who is the big shaitan, he used to ascend the skies. When Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam was born, a veil was created into three heavens. There are seven heavens, right? When Isa alayhi salam was born, a veil was created into three heavens. So Iblis, he would go up and hear news and come back and, and, and mix it with so many other wrong things and tell the, the magicians of the time and the soothsayers of the time. So access or, or was denied. He could not go into three heavens. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born, complete access to any of the heavens were denied. Complete access were denied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 50,000 years before creating this entire universe, not earth I'm talking about, the universe, 50,000 years before creating the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recited Surah to Yaseen. Allah recited which Surah? Surah to Yaseen. What Allah is saying in Surah Yaseen, read Surah Yaseen and you will know just the first two, three ayats. Yaseen wal Quran al Hakim in Naka in Naka lamin al Mursaleen. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is saying, I swear in Naka, I swear by my Quran, you are my Nabi. How is this possible? The universe was not created. The universe was nothing was existing. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was existing. And Allah is saying, You, you my Nabi, innaka minal mursaleen. You are my Nabi. In the Arabic language, Sheikh Zayed is here and others who know Arabic. The word innaka when the dhamir and the pronoun ka is used, inna and ka, it tells you of present tense. I am talking to you. If I'm talking to you here, present here, I will address you as ka, you. Right? Right, Sheikh? Yes. What Allah is saying in Surah Yaseen? Innaka, indeed you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah is saying this, 50,000 years before even creating the entire universe. If it was to come, Allah would have said, Innahu lamin al mursaleen. Innahu, that he will be my Rasul. He will be my Rasul. But Allah did not say that. <coughs> what did Allah say? Inna kalamin al-mursaleen. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah, 
radiyallahu anhu he asked the nabi of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mata wajabat lak an nubuwa mata wajabat lak an nubuwa ya rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when did you become the nabi of allah when did you become the nabi of allah the answer should have been at the age of 40 right when i was 40 years old and to be spot on 40 years six months right to be exact the answer should have been when i was 40 years and six months and 10 days i'm giving you exact figure 40 years what six months and 10 days on the 21st of ramadan it was on a monday when jibreel alayhi salam came to me in the cave of hira and he revealed the first five ayat of surah al-alaq this should have been the answer right that i became a nabi when then but what did rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said kuntu nabiya kuntu nabiya wa adamu bayn ar-ruh wal jasad i was already the nabi of allah and the first man that allah created his body was not yet formed. Kuntu Nabiya wa Adamu bain al ruhi wal jasad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the only man in history that his honorable wives could take his most private life and bring it out into the public domain. And there was nothing but guidance for us. Can you imagine that? Our public life, people sees a lot. But what about your private life? Only those who know you knows your private life, right? In your homes. But he was the only individual. My Nabi and your Nabi was the only individual that all his spouses said, the life, the internal life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if it was brought out and it did come out into the public domain, it gave nothing else but guidance and only guidance. Now, let's go to the topic that I wanted to mention. Loving Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is an integral component of our Iman. It is intrinsic to our lives. Intrinsic to our lives. Today, you and I claim of loving our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and at the same time, we object. We object to the blessed teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Imam Shafi'i Rahmatullahi Alaihi mentioned, on one side, you claim of loving the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at the other side you frown on his teachings how is that can you put those two together you claim when you claim to love someone you follow them in totality whatever they tell you to do you follow them we claim to love the Nabi of Allah but yet we frown on his sunnah and his teachings I'm going to tell each and every one of you here today, study, study the life of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and impress yourself so much. Study his life and impress yourself so much that there isn't room to be impressed by the life of anyone else. Study the life. Do you know what is the status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with me and you? What Allah says in the Quran, An Nabiyu awla, awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim. What does it mean? An Nabiyu awla, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is closer, he is closer to the believers than even their own selves. I'm not saying this, Quran, go and find it. And Nabi you awla, Rasulullah is closer to me and to you than your own selves. What is the hadith in Bukhari? Salatatun, man kunna fi wajada halawatul iman. 
if you have three qualities in your life if you have three qualities in your life you will face you will taste the sweetness of iman i'm not going to speak of all three just one one quality what is that one give me your attention and yakuna allah wa rasulahu ahab ilayhi mimma siwa that allah this was spoken earlier love our imam gamal mentioned the hadith of the prophet sallallahu earlier about love when allah and his rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam becomes beloved to you more beloved to you and me than anything and anyone else in this world more beloved than my wife my husband my children my mother my father my grandparents my whoever when it becomes more beloved to me than my materialistic things in this world then only you can say that you have tasted the sweetness of iman and let me just give you one example of one sahabi what did khubayb radiyallahu ta'ala anhu say when he was captured allahu akbar this was a sahabi of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was captured by the non-muslims and he was beaten severely tortured so they he was about to be executed can you imagine that he was about to be killed and he was about to be executed one of the leaders of the Quraysh comes to him and tell him oh Khubayb do you wish and desire that you now be standing in your home as a free man and the Nabi of Allah be in your place that instead of you being executed the Nabi of Allah being executed and you being a free man and you go if that was me or you what you would have said hey I don't want to die let me go I want to live that would have been my answer or your answer but what did this sahabi mention this is what you call love what did he mention he said wallahi i would prefer to die multiple times i will prefer to die multiple times than a thorn pricking my nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam thorn pricking my nabi sallallahu i cannot bear that pain on my nabi i will prefer dying multiple times and multiple death this is what love is all about my dear respected brothers and elders we love our rasul because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him we love our nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam because quran came upon him we love our nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam because he embodied the perfection of humanity we love our rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam because he was sent as a mercy to all mankind his kindness upon each and every one of us are so enormous they are so enormous that we cannot even count it we love him and we also want the world to love him you know why we want the world to love him and know who he was because he loved the world he loved the world he was sent as a mercy to the entire world when the nabi of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was opposed by his mission and even with his own family he was opposed what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him to do in the Quran? Those who are scoffing at you, those who are making mockery at you, just turn away from them. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the second ayah. Forgive them beautifully. Let them go. Forgive them beautifully. Don't stoop to their level. Return harshness with that which is better. Don't be harsh with them. You are better. You know better. Return harshness with better. This was our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith comes in Bukhari. Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anhu said, The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never took revenge for anything of his personal issue 
nothing of his personal issue he would take revenge from another person yes if it was something else regarding the deen if it was something regarding the sharia and nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would become upset how can we love this rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam if we don't know about him how can we love him if we don't apply his sunnah in our lives the more we hear about him the more we listen to him and about him the more we speak about him we will start loving him more isn't that so the more you speak about your beloved wouldn't you start loving them more so the more we speak about our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the more we hear about him the more we follow his lives inshallah we will start loving him and do you know what loving rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a love by choice what does it mean it's a love by choice loving others is called natural love you love your wife naturally you love your husband naturally you love your parents naturally you love your children naturally these are called natural love but when it comes to the nabi of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam this is a love by choice and you're going to start loving the nabi of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam if you know who he was ibn umar radiyallahu anhu said the life of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was taught to us in a way Quran was taught to us subhanallah the life of Rasulullah was taught to us Sahabi is saying the life of the Nabi of Allah not on a one-time basis not in a one-time gathering the life of the Nabi of Allah was taught to us like how Quran Quran was taught to us the Quran connects us to Allah and the seerah the seerah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam connects us to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam his seerah once a young man Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentions that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the closest to me on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah will be the one who sends salam upon me in abundance listen to this hadith there was one sahabi by the name of Rabi'a radiallahu anhu he said, I used to spend the nights in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What an honor, what an honor. One Sahabi spending the nights with the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahu Akbar. I envy, envy that Sahabi. Did you have the privilege of spending the nights with the Nabi of Allah? So he said, what do I used to do? I used to prepare the water for wudu for the Nabi of Allah whenever he would wake up. I would make sure his wudu water is ready. So, once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw that his wudu water was ready, and he said to me, Oh Rabia, I'm so pleased with you, with what you have done. Ask me for anything you want. Ask me for anything you want. Subhanallah, ask me for anything you want. Coming from the Nabi of Allah, the Rasul is telling me, ask for anything you want. What an opportunity. What a privilege, what an opportunity. So this Sahabi said, I keep thinking and thinking, and what should I ask? What should I ask? What should I ask the Nabi of Allah? And he said, it came in my mind, and I said, Ya Rasul Allah, as'aluka murafataka fil jannah. Oh, Nabi of Allah, what I need, I need your companionship in Jannah. What else could have been asked for? I want to be with you in Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Is there any other request you have? Is there any other request? Can there be any request that beats this one? I want to be with you, O Nabi of Allah, in Jannah. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, no, no, I don't have no other request. I just have this request. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, 
that if you want to be with me in Jannah, alayka bi kathratis sujood. Alayka bi kathratis sujood. Make sure you do a lot of sujood. Make sure you pray all your salah and you do a lot of sujood. You insha'Allah will be with me in Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, O oh Umar, your iman cannot be completed until your love for me by choice is more than the love for anyone else. Do you know who will be the companions of the Nabi of Allah in Jannah? Not Umar, not Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Yes, Abu Bakr and Umar will raise with the Nabi of Allah from his qabr. Rasulullah SAW said, on my right side will be Abu Bakr, on my left side will be Umar, and in front of me will be Bilal. Bilal, where is Bilal buried in Damascus? But when they will raise on the day of Qiyamah, Bilal will be in front of me. Abu Bakr on my right side, Umar on my left side. This is how we will resurrect on the day of Qiyamah. But do you know who will be with the Nabi of Allah in Jannah? Not Abu Bakr and Umar. Two different Sahabi, Talha and Zubair radiallahu anhu. Why not Umar? Why not Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu? Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu had his hand paralyzed. He had his hand paralyzed in defending the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Uhud. He put his body as a shield, as a shield in front of the Nabi of Allah in protecting the Nabi of Allah in the, in the, in the battle of Uhud. Sayyidina Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu he repeatedly on different occasions defended the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam physically with his body. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and why did they this do? Why this was done? Out of profound love. We cannot measure the love of any sahaba for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We cannot. This is what they did for the Nabi of Allah. What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about you and I. He said, Whomsoever takes care of an orphan, kana ma'iya fil jannah. You want to be with me in jannah? That sahabi said, I want to be with you in the, the jannah of Rasulullah. Rasulullah said, you can have the same opportunity. You want to be with me in jannah, which he mentions like this. Take care of an orphan. Not only that, better, even better is coming. If you want to be with me in jannah, an yakuna sahiba yawm al qiyamah kahatayn. It's like this. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You have girl children? You have girl children? Yes. Treat them equally. Treat your girl children equally. You treat them equally. And the day of Al-Qiyamah, you will be with me together. Girl children, you will be with me together. Inna ahabbakum ilayya wa aqrubukum minni yawm Al-Qiyamah. The closest to me on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be the one who has the best character. Allahu Akbar. Listen to this hadith. Allahu Akbar. Listen to it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw a young sahabi, young man. He saw this young sahabi sitting, crying in grief. He was griefing, sitting, crying. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went up to him and he asked him, whenever the Nabi of Allah will see someone like that, he would go up to them. He was the Nabi of Allah. Instead of people coming to him, he will go to them. We want people to come to us today, right? That was the humility and the tawadu of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would go. So he went to this sahabi, this young man, and he asked him, why are you crying in this manner? He said, Ya Rasulullah, you are more beloved to me than even myself. You know, it takes, it takes courage to make such a statement. Oh, Nabi of Allah, you are more beloved to me than even my own self. Even my parents, even my children. Whenever I am at home with my family and I think about you, I cannot wait to see you. I just cannot wait to see you. And when I cannot wait any longer, I will come into the masjid and I will see you. 
This was privilege of Sahaba. They would come and see the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that was not it. He said, but I remember if inshallah I go to Jannah, if inshallah I go to Jannah, O oh, Nabi of Allah, you will be in a higher Jannah than me. You will be in Jannah al Firdaus. Your level will be higher than me. And if I want to see you in Jannah, how would that be possible? I cannot come to you from my home to the masjid to see you. You will be in the Jannah al Firdaus. And I will be in some other Jannah. But whenever I remember you, whenever I want to see you, O oh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how would that be possible? Allah revealed the ayat of the Quran. Man yuti'illaha wal rasul fa'ulaika ma'al ladhina an'am allahu alayhim minan nabiyyina wa siddiqina wa shuhada'i wa salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa. Those who obey Allah and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, insha'Allah they will be with them in Jannah. What the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al mar'u ma'a man ahab. Listen to this hadith. Al mar'u ma'a man ahab. A person will be with the one whom he loves. You will be in Jannah with the one whom you love. If you love the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you will be in Jannah. That's our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How was the Nabi of Allah love for us? How was his love for us? Subhanallah. You cry bitterly when you read and how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved you and me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says about him in the Quran. I recited the ayah in the beginning. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ there has come to you a messenger from amongst your midst. Azizun alayhi ma anittum. He finds it difficult. What Allah is saying? The Nabi of Allah finds it difficult to bear your hardship. He finds it difficult to bear your hardship. Azizun alayhi ma anittum. This is ayat of Quran. Harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen ra'ufur rahim and he is eager with the believers and he is kind and merciful you and i we must know our nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam what kind of an individual he was and how special you and i are in the sight of the nabi of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam do you know how my nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam lived and he cared for you and i Today, you and I, we carry out the wishes and the desires of every person we love. Isn't that so? Your wife tell you to do something, you will run. Hey, this is my, what my wife wants. My children wants this and that, I will go and get it for them right away. Why? We want to fulfill the desires and the wishes of our loved ones. Do we ever think what was the wish and the desire of the Nabi of Allah? My Nabi and your Nabi, what was his wish? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I wish and my desire that in the heart of each and every one of my ummati be Surah Yaseen. That's my wish and my desire, that you learn Surah Yaseen. How much of us are able to fulfill that wish of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu said, I wish and my desire is that you teach your children, teach your children the concluding ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. You know it yourself and teach it to your children. After the second trumpet will be blown, it's coming to Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Jibreel and Mikail with the keys of Jannah to the graves of to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. They will come and they will open the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi of Allah will resurrect. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would ask, what is it? What is it today? What is going to happen? Jibreel alayhi salam would say, O oh, Prophet of Allah, Qiyamah is going to take place. Qiyamah is going to take place. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahu Akbar. Do you know what was his next word? He is being told that Qiyamah is now going to take place. What was his next word? Oh Jibreel, if Qiyamah is now going to take place, what will happen to my Ummah? What will happen to my Ummah? He was not asking what will happen to my wives. He was not asking how, what will happen to my beautiful daughter Fatima radiallahu anha. He was not asking what will happen to Hassan and Hussein, my grandsons. But what he would say, what will happen to my Ummah on the day of Qiyamah? I know because on that day they will need me. They will need me out of desperation. They will need me on the day of Qiyamah. The keys will be given to the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Qiyamah will commence. Understand the last words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he left this world was about his Ummah. And the first word, the first word when he will raise on the day of Qiyamah will be what will happen to my Ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the day of Qiyamah, look at the Nabi of Allah, it was mentioned earlier, Sal tu'ata. O oh Nabi of Allah, ask today, ask today what you desire, it will be granted to you. On the day of Qiyamah, Sal tu'ata. Ask and it will be granted to you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will tell Allah, O oh Allah, begin the hisab and the accountability of my ummah. They cannot bear it any longer to be in the sun. In the sun, they are suffering too much. It comes in hadith that pulpits and thrones will be brought down for prophets on the day of Qiyamah. Pulpits and thrones will be brought down for prophets. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A throne and arsh will also descend for me. Right? But I will not sit on it. I will not, all the other prophets will sit in their thrones and their pulpits. But when mine will be brought for me, I will not sit in mine. So Sahaba asked, why O Prophet of Allah? He said, I fear if I will sit in it, this throne will take me and go into Jannah. It will take me and it will go into Jannah. And if I go into Jannah, what will happen to my Ummah on the day of Qiyamah? They will be left alone. Allahu Akbar. They will be left alone. If I go in Jannah, they will be left alone. <coughs> I don't want to sit on this throne. What will be his plea? Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati. Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati. Rasulullah will continue to beg to Allah. Finally, Allah will give the Nabi of Allah the permission. Go into the hellfire and take out your followers from the hellfire. Go and take them out from the hellfire. Rasulullah said, I will keep begging Allah and begging Allah and begging Allah until Allah will give me permission to take each and every one of my ummati out from Jahannam. Each and every one of them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, The Malik, the Malik of Jahannam will say, You have not left any chance for the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your ummah. Which facet of the ummah today is a source of coolness to the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which facet today, more than 2 billion Muslims today are living on planet earth. More than 2 billion it is like two billion arrows firing at the body of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This month of Rabiul Awal is not to celebrate or commemorate his birth, but to see how much we and I take stock in the way we live the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I will conclude with this. Is my time up? Five minutes, okay. I will conclude. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cried for us more than any mother would cry for a child. He cried for us more than any father would cry for a child. Once, one, one person, <clears throat> his wife told him, if you want to marry me, kill your mother, 
Take her heart out and bring it to me. Take her heart out and bring it to me. He was infatuated in love with this woman. So he went and he killed his mother and he took out her heart and he was bringing it to this woman. As he was walking, coming, he stumbled and he fell. He stumbled and he fell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such that the heart spoke. And the heart said to his, the son, whose heart was it? The heart of a mother. The heart of a mother. What she said to her son, you just stumbled and fell. Are you okay? What he did, he just took out the heart of his mother and his mother heart is still asking, are you okay, oh my son? Did you get hurt? Did you get hurt? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's love for me and you was more than the love of any mother or any father to their children. More than anyone. That's the Nabi Allah gave us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was longing to meet us. He wanted to meet us. He asked the Sahaba, oh my Sahaba, those who will be coming after me, they will be my, they, they will be my lovers. Sahaba said, who, O Prophet of Allah? Rasulullah sallam said, those who did not see me and they would believe in me, I would love them. I would love them. So brothers and sisters, let's become true lovers of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Rasulullah had profound love for me and you. We cannot imagine that. And the only way to do that is to follow his way of life. Bring his life into your life so that you can recognize him in Qabr. And he will be for you, interceding for you and I on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And inshallah, we will be together with him in Jannatul Firdaus. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.